And welcome back, you lovely wheels. It's your number one fat Asian coming to you again with another FIFA 17 experiment. And today is one of my favorite days of the year. Today is the start of the NFL draft. Yes, I'm a fan of both footballs. I am a bi footballer. I enjoy aspects of both types of footballs and all types of spectrums. All of your pronouns are valid. Bruh. But it was the NFL draft that went ahead and inspired me to make this video. What would happen if you took the draft system from the NFL and implemented that into the English Premier League? Now the way that that would work is in the NFL, if you are the crappiest team, if you have the lowest amount of wins, you get the highest pick. So technically, if you suck in the NFL, you want to be in the relegation zone. Because that way you have a chance of a game changer, like a Mbappe Latin, like a Donnarumma. So that's what we're going to go ahead and do here. I'm going to look at the Premier League table as it is at this moment. And we're going to start at the bottom with Sunderland. And each team gets to go ahead and select a brilliant youngster to add to their roster. Now, my boy Jared HD, he did a pretty similar video where he went ahead and took all of the best 22-year-olds and redrafted them onto every single one of the teams in the Prem. Now, I highly suggest you go ahead and check out that video, but I, given Jared's blessing, am going to be doing some distinct differences in this video. First and foremost, we're knocking down the age from 22 to 21. I just thought that the 22-year-olds were a little bit too strong. So I'm going with 21, which is about the average age that most professional players enter the league in America. Second point, I'm not going to touch any high potential player in the Prem. So Deli Alley is going to stay where he is. Iannaccio is going to stay where he is. Martial is going to stay where he is. The teams in the Prem can only draft high potential young 21 year olds from outside of the Prem onto their teams. And the last thing that I'm going to do in this draft is I'm going to analyze every single team and I'm going to draft for their needs. So I'm going to go ahead and see where there are weaknesses in their roster and thus draft a player accordingly. If you like this concept of a video, go ahead, smush your hard direct nipple into the like button and subscribe for more kind of weird FIFA experiments. This took a lot of time and thought process, but I'll be honest, I love this type of shit. It was really fun. So without further ado, let's go ahead and kick it off. So with the first pick in the 2017 Premier League draft, Sunderland are now on the clock. Now, Sunderland are a pretty crap tackler team. They could go a lot of ways. They have a lot of holes to fill. The only two positions that you would say are pretty strong in the side are Jermaine Defoe up top and Jordan Pickford is a very promising young keeper. Sunderland are going to go best player overall here. A consensus number one overall pick. They're going to go ahead and take Mbappe. Mbappe is a striker, but he can also play out on the left side or they can switch up to a 4-4-2, play alongside Defoe. And he has just had a terrifying scoring record for Monaco this year. Clear consensus number one overall pick. I don't think Sutherland are going to be too unhappy with this one. All right, and Middlesbrough are now on the clock. They have the second overall pick in this draft, and we go ahead and then we take a look at their team. They have a lot of holes as well. But while they have a lot of holes to fill in this roster, especially in the midfield, the talent for the best player available right now is just too damn high. And with that, Middlesbrough, with the second overall pick, will draft John Luigi Donnarumma of AC Milan. Yes, they already have an 82 rated keeper in Valdez, but with a monstrous potential of 92. Jonah Rumo was actually the highest potential on the board, even higher than Mbappe. And Middlesbrough could simply not pass that up. And with that, we move to Swansea, who are now on the clock. Swansea City could have gone in a number of directions as well. Uh, they don't have the best striker, nor do they have the strongest midfield or defensive back line. The only thing that they really do have is Sigurdsson. So they're going to go with the best player available, and that is Osman Dembele from Borussia Dortmund. Already a 81 overall and a potential of 91. He was the final 91 potential rated player left on the board, and thus Swansea are going to go ahead and snatch him up. And with that, Hull is now on the clock. Hull City might be the least talented side in the Premier League, on paper anyway. Looking at them, they probably only have one promising youngster that they own, and that is Robertson in the left back position. So they're going to go ahead and take the best player available as well. And with the fourth pick, Hull go ahead and snatch up the second Monaco player on this list, and that is Bernardo Silva. The Portuguese youngster can offer them a lot of versatility either out on the wing or playing in the cam position, and has a potential of 90. And now Burnley are on the clock. You remember when I said Hull might be the least talented side on paper? I lied. It's Burnley. They only have one player really of note, and that is Michael Keane, who has a potential over 80. But Burnley are in some desperate need of a savior, and a savior they will find in Real Madrid's Asensio. 
A lot of people are saying that he is the best Spanish prospect out there in the world right now. And he's going to offer him a lot of creativity and pace both at the camp position and on the wings. And with that, Lester is on the clock. And this one is an easy one. Lester, go ahead and fill the void left by N'Golo Conte with one of the best young prospects in the world, and that is Quarantine Tolisso from Lyon. At the age of 21, not only is Tolisso one of the better defensive midfielders for his age range, he actually is just one of the best midfielders, period, in Ligue 1, a slam dunk pick at the number six position. And with that, West Ham is on the clock. And with the seventh overall pick, West Ham go ahead and fill the void left by Payet by signing the third Monaco player on this list, and that is Limon. Tom Smart is pretty much an analog for Payet. He can play the left mid, the camp position, and he's pretty good with dead balls. The only thing difference is Tom Smart is younger and faster. A solid, solid pick for the Irons, and now Bournemouth are on the clock. You remember when I said Hull City was the least talented team on paper, and then I said Burnley was the least talented team on paper? I lied for both. It's Bournemouth. The highest rated player they have is a 76, and they're in the Prem. So Bournemouth, with their pick, it's going to shake up a few feathers. They're going Alvin LaFont. Bournemouth are aiming for survival here, and they think that their best bet is in the young French keeper. Will it work out for them? We'll see in the experiment. But now, Crystal Palace is on the clock. Now, Crystal Palace is interesting because they actually do have a few good pieces in Zaha, Bendeke, and Sacco. But then again, they are starting Jason Punchin in the center mid position. Thus, they are ecstatic to walk up to the podium and announce with their first pick and select Yuri Tielisman from Anderlecht. The longshot bomber has been lighting it up in both his league and Europa this season. And many have touted him as the best center mid prospect in the world. And he is now going to be on Crystal Palace. And with that, Stoke City are on the clock. As we get into the mid-table teams, I think this is where the draft is going to affect them the most. Because an incredible player or two for these teams can leapfrog them into the top four. So this is a monstrous pick for Stoke City. And if you go ahead and take a look at the roster, they have two brilliant wingers in Anatovish and Shakiri, a solid defensive back line, and the Welsh messy Joe Allen creating attacks. Unfortunately, they have Peter Crouch starting up top for them. I know they also have Wilfred Boney on loan, so this proves that they like a big target man up top, and there is not a better young target man, or maybe a better striker prospect in the world right now than Ajax's own Casper Dolberg. Stoke City are ecstatic that Casper Dolberg has lasted this long and they find a steal with their first overall pick here. But with that, Watford is on the clock. Watford is a pretty well-balanced team that has kind of overachieved in the past two seasons. If we go ahead and we take a look at their weaknesses, you would say that maybe fullback or the keeper would be places that they would look to upgrade. But with LaFont and Donnarumma off the board, it's a pretty big reach for them to go ahead and try to grab the next highest rated keeper. So what they're going to do here is they're going to go for one of the best midfield prospects. Well, some argue he is the best midfield prospect in the world right now, and that is Renato Sanchez. I know they got a decent trio of 77s in the midfield, but Brahimi is at 31, and a physical pairing of Renato Sanchez alongside Dokore for the future, Watford would be terrorizing in the midfield. So with that, Southampton is on the board. Southampton is a tough team to go ahead and pick for because they have bright young talents in almost every single position. They're tempted to go ahead and maybe pick up a center back to pair along Virgil van Dijk, but at the last second they change their minds and they think a little bit more offensively. And they go for the Barcelona product, Alan Halilovic. The young Croatian is touted as the next Rakitic, and Southampton hope that they have found the next great playmaker in the Prem. And with that, West Brom is on the clock. All right, just take a look at West Brom. They got an aging midfield, so this one pretty much going chalk. They go with one of the better young center mid prospects in the world, and that is PSG's Rabia. And that goes ahead and puts Arsenal on the clock. There have been a lot of fanfare, a lot of debate on what Arsenal really need to go ahead and solidify themselves. Do they need a top end striker, maybe a good left back, or someone to pair alongside Koscielny? But I think the weakness for Arsenal this year, and possibly the weakness that they've had for many years, is finding a truly great CDM. Whether it be through injury or Shaka just not cutting the mustard, they haven't been able to solidify that position in the team for a very long time. Until now, because with their pick, Arsenal are going to take one of the best prospects in La Liga, and that will be the brilliantly talented central defensive midfielder from Atletico Madrid, Saul. A key cog in Diego Simeone's team, this could be a pick remembered by Arsenal fans for many years to come. And with that, Everton are on the clock. Everton, along with Southampton, have one of the more talented younger sides in the Prem. Now, while Everton have a talented back four 
it is an aging back four. Leighton Baines, Williams, and Jagielka are all over the age of 30. But Everton, always so shrewd with their scouting, they realize that there is a lot of defensive depth in this draft, and they go ahead and take the best player available. Maybe a little bit of a luxury pick, but they're going to go ahead and pick up Kingsley Coman from Bayern Munich. The thought of having the youngster Kingsley come on if they can hold on to Lukaku with Ross Barkley on one side and Davies through the middle, definitely, definitely a side to watch. Maybe take the next step to make it into that top four. And with that, Manchester United are on the clock. Now, I am a Manchester United fan, but if you look at the roster as it is on the screen right now, you will notice an aging regista in the name Michael Carrick. Over the past decade, Manchester United have tried and failed to find a possible successor to Michael Carrick. But today, they might have just filled that void because with their pick, they take Joshua Kimmich of Bayern Munich. He's been playing so well in the Bundesliga that he's been keeping Renato Sanchez on the bench. And now, Manchester City is on the clock and they cannot believe who is still on the board. Manchester City has spent hundreds upon hundreds of pounds trying to find the next great center back. So it was no surprise when they step up to the podium and select Jonathan Toth, highly regarded as the best young defender prospect in the world to add to their roster. Maybe they could have gone keeper, but as I said, it's a bit of a reach because there is a substantial drop off in talent from Donnarumma and Lafont here. So, so they go ahead and they take the highest overall defender and the first defender, I believe, on the board. And with that, Liverpool are now on the clock. Liverpool is the highest scoring team in the Premier League. Their issue is letting goals in. But if you go ahead and take a look at the back line, they're pretty high rated. Lovren and Matip are both 82 or above. Nathaniel Klein is a national team member. So Jurgen Klopp cannot help himself. He's going to go ahead and grab one of his old players from Borussia Dortmund, the German CDM Julian Weigel. Already an 81 overall and key to Borussia Dortmund. And of course, Jurgen Klopp would already know exactly how to use him. And with that, Spurs are now on the clock. Tottenham are stacked from top to bottom, from bench to starters, with high potential players. Whatever they pick here is truly a luxury. So they go with one of the highest rated players still on the board, and that is Nicholas Sula of Hoffenheim. Hoffenheim have done surprisingly well in the Bundesliga this season, and no doubt part to Nicholas Sula. The young center back has been absolutely fantastic, and he will be an heir to Vertonghen, who's approaching 30. And with the last pick in the first round of the 2017 draft, Chelsea are now on the clock. They're the best team in the league, and they buy up youngsters like nobody's business. But if you go ahead and you take a look at their back line, David Luiz and Gary Cahill are 29 and 30, respectively. So they're going to go ahead and load up in the center back position by picking up Jose Jimenez of Atletico Madrid. Moving on to the second round, it's going to be a little bit different here because primarily from this point on, people are going to be drafting for need. So we start back again at the top of the second round with Sunderland. In the first round, they went flash with probably the best overall offensive player on the board, and that was Mbappe from Monaco. In this round, Sunderland are going all firepower. They go ahead and take the American prodigy, Christian Pulisic. Sunderland could have gone in a lot of directions here, maybe getting a better center back. The playmaking ability and potential of Christian Pulisic is just too great. And now Middlesbrough are back on the clock. For the pick in the first round, Middlesbrough went defensive, picking up John Luigi Donnarumma with the highest potential overall prospect in the draft. Now they got to go ahead and find someone to score the goals. And they are delighted to see Donald Briel Mbolo is still on the board. He can offer them Brazili play up front when Negredo moves on, or he can play out on the wings. His combination of physicality and speed will suit the Premier League quite nicely. And now Swansea are on the board in the second round. In the first round, they took Osman Dembele. And now they're going to go ahead and upgrade at the striker position, picking up Sanabria. The 20-year-old from Paraguay is considered by some as the best striking prospect in the world. And it is an incredible steal for Swansea to pick up in the second round. And with that, Hull City is on the board. They picked up Bernardo Silva in the first round. But they're going to go with strategy that a lot of these relegation fodder teams have been trying out. And that is get a world-class or potential world-class keeper. They're going to pick up Drakowski. And now Burnley back on the clock. The first round, they picked up Marco Asensio. They're going to look to go ahead and upgrade from Joey Barton and pick up Toussart from Lyon. And now Leicester are back on the clock. In their first round, they picked up Quarantine Tolisso to go ahead and fill the void and Mangolo Conte. Now, in the second round, they are delighted to go ahead and pick up Rugani, the center back from Juventus. At 80 overall, he's already an upgrade to Morgan and Huth and will help solidify an incredibly leaky backline that has caused them issues 
all season long. The, the pickup of Rugani and Taliso might be the best to pick up where it meets best player on the board as well as meeting their team needs. And with that, West Ham are now on the board. West Ham picked up Thomas Lamar in round one to replace the runaway Dimitri Payet. But in the second round, they're going to pick up a little Argentinian by the name of Angel Correa. West Ham have had a little bit of success recruiting Argentinian strikers before, so they're going to try to strike gold twice. And the prospect of the injury prone Andy Carroll up front, this is a solid solid pick for depth as well. And now Bournemouth are back on the clock. Their first pick was Albin Lafont. They went a defensive Hail Mary. Now they need some offensive firepower. They go ahead and pick up St. Maximin. Fraser and Pugh were 72 overall apiece, so to pick up a winger with 88 potential at this point in the draft, Bournemouth cannot be happier. And now Crystal Palace is on the board. In the first pick, they went ahead and solidified their midfield for the next decade, picking up Yuri Tielisman. Now they look to find an upgrade on Thompson by picking up Malang Sar of OGC Nice. And that goes ahead and puts Stoke City back on the clock. With the first pick, they picked up Casper Dolberg, and with the second one, they're going to go ahead and help solidify a midfield that is aging with Whelan and Adams in there. They are going to go ahead and pick up a true box-to-box -box midfielder in Nabi Keita. He's been lighting up the Bundesliga for RB Leipzig. Dolberg and Nabi Keita, that is a solid one-two punch for Stoke City in this draft. Watford are now on the clock. They picked up Renato Sanchez in round one, and in round two, they're going to address the keeper position and pick up Riza Balaga. And now Southampton are on the clock. They picked up Alan Halilovic in the first round for going their defensive center back needs, but depth has dropped to them regardless, and they're going to pick up the AC Milan Pirate, Ro Magnoli. West Brom are now on the board. They picked up Rabiot in the first to go ahead and strengthen up a mediocre midfield. And now to go ahead and take a look at the squad, they're going to see if they can find a bit more firepower to help out Morrison up there. So they pick up the winger from Bayer Leverkusen, Julian Brandt. And now, much maligned Arsenal are back on the board. They had a sensational pick, picking up Saul. Very, very talented, fit their need in the first round. Arsenal Winger looks to upgrade at the left back position by picking up another Frenchman from Monaco. Yes, another one. Benjamin Mendy goes ahead and goes to Arsenal. Everton are now on the clock. They had a pretty sexy pick in Kingsley Coman. We already mentioned in the first round that they have an aging back line, but with a lot of the top center back prospects taken, Everton go ahead and opt to pick up Grimaldo to be the heir apparent to Leighton Baines at the left back position. Manchester United are now back on the clock. In the first round, Manchester United went ahead and picked up Joshua Kimmich to fill the role of a deep line playmaker. Now they're gonna go ahead and find a more advanced playmaker and they go back to the Bundesliga and pick up Maximilian Meyer from Schalke. And now Manchester City are on the clock. They were able to go ahead and take Jonathan Todd, the top rated center back prospect in this draft in round one, quite a steal, and now they're gonna go ahead and address their need for the keeper position by picking up Andre Onana from Ajax. And now Liverpool are on the board. In the first round, Jurgen Klopp went and found his boy, Julian Weigel from Borussia Dortmund. He's tempted to double dip back at Borussia, but he holds his tongue and he realizes that between the legs of Roberto Firmino and Divock Origi and the often injured Daniel Sturridge, his team needs an out-and-out -out reliable striking option. So he goes ahead and he picks up one of the hottest prospects in European football right now, Andre Silva of Porto. And now the Spurs are back on the clock. Any pick for them on this roster is a luxury, and that is exactly what they took in the first round by taking up Nicolas Sula of Hoffenheim, an incredible center back prospect. And here, they're going to take another luxury pick, Emmanuel Locatelli of AC Milan. Making his debut at the age of 18, Locatelli has already become an integral part of AC Milan, and he will offer incredible depth and playmaking ability for Spurs for many years to come. And Chelsea, with the final pick in the 2017 Premier League draft, are going to go ahead and select Val de Keita. Pedro and Moses Simon were getting up there in age, so why not go ahead and have a replacement in the wings at the winger position? And that goes ahead and concludes the first ever Premier League draft. Looking over this draft, uh, a problem becomes kind of apparent. Having the whole world as your player pool and draft where it's only two rounds and there's only 20 teams makes it, it it's it's too deep. Yes, Mbappe Latin and Donnarumma and Osman Dembele are going to be difference makers because all their potentials are 90, 91, 92. But if you take a look at this, Chelsea had the last pick in each round and they were still able to get really, really good players in Jimenez and Baldi Keita. I believe they're 88 and 87 potential each. Nothing to shake a stick at. But I think where it will be most interesting is in the teams that are kind of mid-table. Teams that were missing maybe one or two more pieces to truly ascend to the next level. 
All right, so the draft is in the books. The players are on their respective teams. We are now in July of 2016. We are going to sim to the end of the season and see what the teams are like then, how the teams are standing, how the new kids are doing. But that's probably not gonna do all that much, let's be honest. So after that, we're also gonna sim ahead five seasons and then see if this draft has any effect on the Premier League. So let's go ahead and sim to July of 2016. And while I'm doing that, let me know in the comments down below which team do you think came out the best in this draft? Who had the best one two combo? Or vote up in the I think he's personally. Uh, my thoughts for best teams looking at the list Spurs picking up Sula and Locatelli is ridiculous. Like they're already super loaded, and to get those two, pretty damn good. I might be a little bit biased, but you know, Manchester United with Kimmich and then going ahead and grabbing Maximilian Meyer. Really, that's all they needed was a little bit more creativity in their midfield. And then I also thought Arsenal picking up Saul and then Mendy at the left back position, really solidifying points of need. And then Stoke City was able to pick up Casper Dolberg and Naby Keita, two guys who were just tearing their prospective leagues apart this season. And while they have a lot of holes, Swansea picking up Osman Dembele and Sanabria, that's a lot of firepower. So I'm going to go ahead, put those teams up in the poll. Who do you think turned out the best in this freaking draft? Without any further ado, hit me up, Joey Wheeler. Go time with it! All right, we are now in June of 2017. Let's go ahead and take a look at the table, see if this draft has changed anything. At the top, Chelsea have won the league. Pretty expected Manchester United came in second, Spurs, and then Manchester City. That's pretty chalk for the top four, but... Actually, if we look at this, the mid-table is wonky. West Brom all the way up in 5th place, Watford in 7th. South, what? Sunderland is all the way up in 11th place. Burnley and Middlesbrough actually doing quite well. In the top half of the table, who's going? Stoke! Stoke City, Hull and Bournemouth I expected, but Stoke are a solid team. But this is just the first year. Now, let's go ahead. Let's go back to the calendar and we're going to sim ahead a couple more seasons. Well, five seasons to be exact. And then we're going to see how the table is going to look like when these talents who have got onto these teams have matured to full final form. Go time with it! All right, many, many hours later of simming and we have reached June of 2021. Let's go ahead. Let's take a look at the player stats first before we get into the table. We can see for the top scores in the Premier League, it was Philip Coutinho, uh, Liverpool, Paul Papa coming in second. Then two midfielders getting it and then Vossen of Queens Park Rangers. Interesting. Uh, if we go down, it's St. Maximim, who's the first youngster that was drafted, who makes it on, so getting 15 goals, and he's on Everton, which is interesting because I'm pretty sure he did not start over at Everton. He indeed started over at, let's see here, he started at Bournemouth, but because Bournemouth got relegated, they had to sell. Everton got themselves a steal right there. We keep on going down. Now Keita getting in 9th place with Stoke City with 14 goals. Very nice. Thomas Lamar getting in 11th place with West Ham. And then is there anyone else? Yes, Osman Dembele picking up a couple for Swansea City. Top assist man was um, Ahmed Musa tying with Harry Kane of Tottenham. Then we see St. Maximin going ahead and popping up for Everton again with seven. Joshua Kimmich also popping up on the list with six assists. Osman Dembele also got six for Swansea. And all right, a little bit surprising here on the clean sheets. It is Jack Butland going ahead and claiming the title of the Golden Glove with 10 clean sheets. But you see John Luigi Donnarumma put it in work, you know, tied for second place with nine clean sheets. And then if we keep on going down the list, Urza Balaga not doing all too bad either. And Onana also not doing all too bad. And you can see right there a noteworthy name, Manuel Nora. I had to buy him because fucking Manchester United, the board kept on selling every other in their motherfucker to just not get fired. I, I, I bought Neuer and honestly, it didn't help. They only had five clean sheets. It's pretty interesting, man. It's not the usual suspects. You would think, you know, maybe Arsenal, Chelsea, Tottenham, Man City, Manchester United, but no, it's dominated by kind of the mid-table teams. That's, that's, that's weird. So let's go ahead. Let's check out the table from the top. We're going to see who has won the league. It is <laughs> City. Oh my God. They won it, and it wasn't even, they won it by six points to Manchester United. Swansea are in third, and West Ham are in fifth. That is unbelievable. Spurs and Liverpool also in there. Watford's up in there. Sunderland is in the top half of the table. The fuck is going on? Arsenal, Chelsea, Manchester City are in the bottom half of the table. And Stoke got relegated the first season that they were in. 
So yeah, uh, who on their papers, who had their predictions? Stoke City, Casper Dolberg, and Nabi Keita would be the draft to bring them to Premier League glory. Absolutely ridiculous. That settles it. We need a draft of the EPL. But yeah, if you like these types of quirky FIFA 17 experiments, this took a really long time to actually do, so go ahead. Please appreciate it a lot. If you smush your nipple into that like button, share it with your friends, subscribe, and all that good of goodness. If you want to go ahead and check out Jared's draft video, it's a goodie, and he had really different results, uh, go ahead and click over here, ding. And if you want to see what it looks like if all the best NBA All-Stars played in FIFA 17, uh, that's another collab with Jared. Go ahead and click over here, ding. But yeah, anyway, that's it from me, Be modest. Hopefully you guys have. Wonderful day. Stay yourself. Stay humble. Be weird.